The Lake Observer mobile application, developed by the Global Lake Ecological Observation Network, also known as GLEON, provides users in the volunteer monitoring community with an easy way to submit water quality data using their own smartphones. The app is available in both Android and iOS or iPhone formats. The data captured with the app is then automatically submitted to the GLEON database and will be submitted to EPA using their Water Quality Exchange Network. This video will provide you with the information you'll need to begin using the Lake Observer app. For this video, the iOS or iPhone version will be used. So first off, I'll demonstrate how to install the app on your mobile device. Mobile device. So on your iPhone, simply go to your App Store icon, tap on the search icon, type in Lake Observer. So here you can see that the Lake Observer app has opened on the phone. And because I already have it installed, it just says Open. However, if this is your first time installing it, you will select the button where it says Get to download it onto your mobile device. So once it is installed on your phone, you can open the app and you'll come to the login page. So if you do not have an account with Gleon, you'll need to register. So if you click the click here to register, and you'll come to the sign up page. So in your sign up page, you can choose a username, your email, a password, and then you would tap on create new account. After you hit create new account, you'll see a pop-up message that will instruct you to check your email for a confirmation message. So if I go to my email, here I can see the account confirmation link. You'll need to click this link in order to finish registering the application. It's very important that you complete this step. And if you don't receive a confirmation message within five to 10 minutes, you can contact Lake Observer. You can contact them at lakeobserver, all one word, dot org, backslash contact, dash us. So now that you've installed the app, you can go and log in. And under your email that you use to set up the account and your password, then you can tap on submit. So when you first open the device, you'll need to set your location. From this screen, you can enter the water body name, which is just the, simply the name of where you're doing your sampling. You can enter the site. If you um, track your sites within a separate ID or name, you can enter that information here. And you also have the ecosystem type. So for this, you have a list that you can select from, lake, reservoir, river stream, or wetland. When you've selected that, you can tap done. And when you're entered all your information for the water body that you're going to be sampling at, tap done. And you'll get a note that your preferences have been confirmed. So now you're ready to use the Lake Observer app. While you can enter and submit the water measurements in any order, for the purposes of this video, we'll begin with the Secchi readings. Then we'll move on to weather information. And finally, we'll show you how to enter other water quality parameters. So first off, from the app's home screen, we're going to select measurements. Then we're going to select the water and ice option. And then we'll select Secchi depth. This brings you to the Secchi depth page. So as you can see, there are several fields you can fill in. The first field, the water depth, refers to the total depth of the water body. Remember that this is the only screen where you can provide the water depth. Make sure that you check either feet or meters. The second field is the Secchi depth. So this is where you'll enter your reading. And remember again to choose feet or meters. The third item is the platform. So this is simply where you actually took the, the sample from. And your choices are a boat or canoe, a dock or bridge, where you're waiting, or other. When you've selected the appropriate value, just tap Done. Note that at the bottom of the screen, your location, the date, and the time are being automatically captured by your mobile device. When you're satisfied that you've filled in everything correctly, we can go ahead and hit the submit button. When you hit submit, the submission menu will appear and you can now choose to submit the entry. You may get this GPS accuracy message. This is okay and you can just click submit. And now you get a little message letting you know that your data was submitted. And you can just tap okay. You can also use the notifications field to verify that your data was submitted. 
At the bottom of the screen, tap on notifications. And now you can see the notification message that your um, data submission was successful. Now that we've entered a Secchi disk reading, we'll move on to entering some weather information. So now to get back to the page where we can enter weather information, we're going to tap on water and ice, and then we're going to tap on back, and now we're back to the measurements screen. From here, we're going to select weather. Let's first enter the temperature. So now I'm going to select temperature, and this is the air temperature. I'm going to go type in a value for that, and remember to choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. Again, note at the bottom of your screen that your location, the date, and the time are being automatically captured. When I filled in my temperature, I'm going to click Submit. And from the Submission menu, I'm going to choose Submit Entry. I get the GPS accuracy message, and I'm going to click Submit. And then I get a pop-up saying that my data has been submitted. And I will click OK. Again, if I want to check that my submission was successful, I can also use the notifications link at the bottom of the screen. And I can see that my error temp was successfully submitted. When I'm done reviewing that, I'm just going to tap Done to return to the screen. So now that I've entered air temperature, let's go back and enter cloud cover. To do this, I simply tap the weather button. And now I'm back to the weather screen. And I can tap on cloud cover. And when I get to the cloud cover screen, there are pre-populated fields that I can choose from. And here are the options. I'm just going to choose one and tap Done. Notice how, again, at the bottom, your location, date, and time are being automatically captured by your mobile device. Now that I have the cloud cover selected, I'm going to choose Submit. When the submission menu pops up, I'm going to choose Submit Entry. Again, I get this GPS accuracy message. I'm going to click Submit, and then get the pop-up that my data was successfully submitted. And again, just to be sure that my data was submitted, I'm going to check the notifications. And now I can see that I have successfully submitted both air and cloud cover. Now I'm going to tap Done to return to the cloud cover screen. So now that we've seen how we can submit Secchi disk readings and weather information, let's take a look how the, how the app can also be used to submit other water quality parameters. So I'm going to go ahead to return to the measurement screen. And to do this, I'm going to tap on weather and then back. And now I'm back to the measurement screen. From this screen, I'm going to choose water and ice. Now I'm going to choose water quality. And now I'm on the water quality screen. And we'll talk through what each of these fields is used for. The first one is required, and it's environment. This reveal refers to the area where the sample was taken, and the app provides you with two choices, near shore or open water. When you've selected the appropriate value, tap Done. The sampling depth is also required, and this field refers to the depth where the sample was taken. And also note that the app will allow you to submit data that's at multiple sampling depths. In order to do this, you would just first choose your first sampling depth. Be sure to choose feet or meters. You would fill in all of your necessary information and then submit it, and then go back and do it for the next um, sample depth. So we're going to move down, and this temperature field refers to the water temperature at the depth of the sample. And then you have other parameters that you can, you can enter, such as conductivity, pH, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, or chlorophyll. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to enter a value for pH and a value for dissolved oxygen. Note again at the bottom of the screen how your location, date, and time are being automatically captured by the mobile device. So when you've finished filling in all the fields, we're going to go to the top of the screen and click on Submit. When the Submission menu pops up, we're going to choose Submit Entry. When the GPS accuracy message pops up, we're going to choose Submit. We now get a message saying that our data was successfully submitted. Tap OK. You can also click on the Notifications link 
to review that everything that you submitted for your session was done successfully. And you can see for this session, we have su successfully submitted sucky dip readings, air temp, cloud cover, and three different water quality parameters. I'm going to tap done. And if you want to return to the home screen, you will tap water and ice, back, and back again. And now you're back at the Lake Observer home screen. So thank you for your interest in using the Lake Observer mobile app. Please note a user guide is also available for the app. And more information can be found on Gleon and the Lake Observer app can be found at the Lake Observer website, which is lakeobserver.org. No